Hello everybody. Um, in my collection of cameras, um, I'm lucky enough to own a Roliaflex 2.8A, uh, which, um, unlike pretty much every camera that I've collected over the years, and you know, I try and only buy cameras that I'm going to use, uh, and I use this camera quite often uh, with 120 film because it's medium format. Um, this is one of the only cameras where. Um, I didn't get it off eBay and I didn't get lucky and find it in a charity shop. Um, uh, my kind of step granddad, uh, when he was very elderly, went into a care home and uh, when they were going kind of through his possessions and, and tidying up his house and things, they found a couple of big boxes full of old camera equipment from the early 1930s right through to the kind of 1970s. And uh, everybody in my family knows that I'm a bit uh, crazy about film cameras. So um, they said, we've got all these old, looks like broken old cameras. Um, do you want them? And, uh, you know, you might be able to make use of some of them um, rather than throw them in the bin. So uh, a couple of days later, a couple of big boxes arrived and I sifted through these boxes and there was probably about seven or eight cameras in there. And they were all, um, thing, they were all basically um, broken and worth very little money and... Um, uh, I haven't thrown any of them away, but they've just gone on a shelf as sort of for display. Um, and there was lots and lots of negatives from the 30s, 40s, and 50s and 60s um, in medium format and um, also in sort of 35 millimeter format, which nobody had ever seen. So I scanned all those in and shared them with the family. And there was also lots and lots of film that had never been developed that had been taken by the looks of it with this camera. Um, and under in the second box, under lots of newspaper. I um and I thought that's it, you know, it was just sort of a couple of boxes of old broken old sort of fairly worthless cameras. Um that weren't my cup of tea really. They're just gonna go on a shelf for display. But I found this. And um couldn't believe my eyes really, because I've always wanted a Rolly Flex and um felt very fortunate that a sort of family heirloom um had been passed to me. Nobody else in the family was interested in shooting film and um so it was broken, didn't work, and it had been badly modified internally to take um, 35 millimeter film. So uh, the first thing I did was sort of stump up the money really to get it professionally serviced by a Rolia Flex, an ex Rolia Flex technician who kind of in retirement gets these cameras up and working again. And uh, he sent it back to me a few days later and uh, phoned me and said, "Do you know what you've got there?" And I said, "Well, I know I've got a Rolia Flex, and it looks like a two point." Uh, eight, so it's a sort of faster one, which is, uh, I know that they're kind of worth a bit more. Um, and I'd never sell this camera uh, because, you know, it belonged to a relative of my family and was uh, sort of handed down to me, as it were. Um, but, um, you know, the 2.8 is the one to get, and I knew that, but that was about it. And he said, well, actually, this is quite a rare camera. It's the very first Rolia Flex 2.8 that they did. Um, they did a couple of versions in sort of 49 and 50 uh, that were uh, sort of 80 millimeter 2.8. Um, and this is from the first batch. And the reason I know that is um, well, that he told me, and then I've since re uh, researched it, is it's got the, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, it's got the Jenner lens. So what happened was they made, uh, in that first year, they made half of them with the Jenner lens and about a third of those uh, came back in because, well, people complained and um, they started getting sent back in for faults because there was something wrong with the lens and it wasn't very sharp at 2.8. And they realised something had gone wrong and it's just after the war in 49 and I don't know if sort of the lenses got mixed up in, in the boxes or something, but um, they put the wrong glass in or something defective. So they did a complete recall of all uh, 2.8A uh, sort of first um, batch run of Relia Flexes and said anybody can send them back in if you've got this Jenna lens. As we know about a third of them, um, I've got a fault where it's not very sharp. Um, and so you do see these, they're quite rare, but when you do find them on eBay and, and things like that, they almost never have the Jenna lens because it got replaced with a Zeiss Opton Tessa lens. Um, and uh, so I'm quite lucky to have one with the Jenna lens, although at first I thought, oh, does that mean it's got this fault? But I've shot loads of film through it, and this thing is absolutely razor sharp at 2.8. So it's one of the two thirds of uh, the ones that were made that didn't need to get sent back. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, 
So it's kind of extra special in lots of ways to me, really, um, uh, because of the family connection, because it's uh, a Rolly Flex, because it's a 2.8, and because it's this kind of fairly rare early version with the uh, with the Jenna lens. Um, so I thought I'd do a video about it um, and kind of go through the main functions and how you use the camera. When I first got this camera, I was watching every video I could get to try and understand how to use it and um, there's videos on the more modern versions with the light meter and things like that but there weren't that many videos on these kind of earlier versions um, that are a bit more simple um, to use and have less sort of dials and things so I thought I'd uh, do my own one and try and cover everything off that I learned okay so first thing is looking at the front this lens takes the picture and this one um, bounces the image through the viewfinder so you can see when I open that up the light comes on because as it were because it's what it's doing is you're looking through that glass at a mirror the mirrors inside there and it bounces the image going through the lens uh, into the camera and then up through the viewfinder um, and then you focus using this and you'll see when you focus it moves it's literally moving the whole front of the camera um, and then when you're looking through and I focus it'll bring into you can't I can't really focus on anything here but um, that's how you focus and it's it's um, got a nice uh, amount of you can really fine-tune the focus on that um, you know the throw on the focus is is long enough that you can really nail focus um, when you're focusing um, these first sort of uh, a lot of the early radio flexes glass is quite kind of foggy in the corners and there's really a central circle there that um, where you can kind of see what's going on and I'll try and focus on on sort of painting of a balloon and a cloud on the wall there um, but then what you can do is flip up this I don't know if you're going to see really but um, and then you, you look through there and then you can uh, you can basically Make sure you've definitely got uh, the eyes of the person in focus, whatever you're taking a photo of. Um, these two knobs here are to do with putting the film in and then the take-up spool, which I'll cover in a minute when I open the camera. Uh, you've got a flash kind of sync port thing there, which I've never used. I wouldn't use this with flash, but people that did had a kind of bracket that attached to the bottom and the flash would sit there, attach this piece of this bracket and the lead would go in the front. Uh, you've got a self timer there, so you sort of pull that down and then you um, fire that and there's a delay. It takes the shot. Again, I don't use the self timer very often, although I absolutely love the photography of Vivian uh, Mayer and she uh, did a lot of really uh, amazing self portraits using this camera. So definitely should I should definitely do that at some point. See if I can take a nice black and white self portrait. Uh, with the camera, maybe using mirrors and things like that, reflect reflected surfaces like she did. Um, you've got your strap lugs there on either side. Um, there was a sort of special um, uh, uh, um, camera strap that went through and then attached onto here and and here, um, which I don't have. It did come with a leather case though, um, but I just used a normal uh, camera strap and just feed it through uh, there and there. Uh, on the side you've got your frame counter there and then when you take a shot you basically go like that and then it, it hits some resistance and then you wind it back and then you pop it in and it's cocked for the next shot and then you take the shot again and then you go and then like that again and it won't go any further than that and then it's cocked for the next shot and then if you don't want to take the next shot you just pop it in like that when there's no film in the camera it behaves differently you can just kind of keep winding this round and round and round but when there's film in there as I say the way it behaves is you take the shot and then you go like that and then back and then you pop it in and then you're ready to take the next shot as long as you've taken off the safety as it were there um, that's kind of it for the outside uh, and then on the inside so what you do is you uh, oh God, it's been a little while since I did this um, you uh, 
push it that way. Sorry, the way the arrow says. So you push it that way like that. And then, and you've got your tripod mount there as well. Um, and then you pull it open like that. Uh, so when I got this, this plate had been uh, removed and replaced with something else that kind of made it use 35 millimeter. Um, and in here there was an extra bit for 35 millimeter and then in this take up spool as well had been changed to take a 35 millimeter and here as well. So the technician in the UK was a kind of semi-retired ex Roliflex uh, employee, uh, did a fantastic job. And I think when, you know, when he called me and talked to me about uh, how rare this camera was to have the original Jenner lens and he'd only seen maybe one before when he'd been servicing them all these years. Uh, that was the uh, sort of first 2.8a Rolia flexes um, and the one that he'd done before didn't have the Jenner lens it was one of the ones where these isopton had been replaced so he was kind of like quite chuffed to uh, tell me about all of that and to sort of say I've got this camera working again and you can take it out and take more family photos with it because um, I sort of said to him that it'd been a uh, taken hundreds of pictures of my grandparents and great-grandparents and uh, now I'd be taking pictures of my uh, children, uh, their great grandchildren. So um, it's really nice to have that all set up again to take 120. So, and I'll try and do this. Um, hang on, I'm going to put the lens cap on. And that's just, you've got like uh, three little teeth sort of thing, and they go, you sort of slot them in, and then go like that, and it clicks, and then you pop that down. Right, so. Get one of these and get them off eBay. Little case for 120 film. And um, I'll pick a roll. All right. Uh, all right. It's quite tricky to do this on whilst also recording, but I'll give it. I'll give it a go. So inside the inside there, you get that 120. And I think it's a 12 exposure there. Okay, so it's quite easy to get this wrong if you don't know. So uh, you take this bit uh, just to kind of get, take that bit off just so that you can kind of get the lip. Now I don't need that bit now, so I can go. So I've now, and obviously I want to be really careful not to let the film un uncurl because then it'll expose. So then I've got like that there. Okay, like the tongue of the film, and I'm Keep my thumb there to keep it from un unraveling. Then what I want to do is get that in there and the other side on there, which can be a bit tricky. Um, and sometimes if um, when you get these cameras, the take up spool will be there, an empty take up spool, and you need to move that and put it in here. Um, but I preempted that I'd already when I finished the last roll. So that's in now. Okay. So you then feed that under there. Okay. And a lot of people forget that and it goes over and they think, oh, that's fine. They don't understand uh, that they've actually done that bit wrong. But you must go under there. And then. I don't think it goes on. I think it then just goes over like that. I'll take that little bit off if I can. There we go. And then pull that over. And ordinarily, I'd probably do this in sort of dimmer light because it's not like a 35 millimeter film where it's all contained. Um, and then on here, if you can see, there's a. Um, there are slots on the take-up spool, and what you want to do is feed the end of the film into the slot. Okay, so I'll pop that in like that. So I'm trying to set an angle that you can see, but I can also do it. Okay, so that's kind of in, and then I'm going to turn the thing like that. And you see, it starts to starts to take the film and then what you do is you um, keep going 
until you see this that says start. And from what I've been told, and it's always worked for me, you stop it when that start is on that central kind of end metal rod there like that. Okay, and you know that's now been taken up nice and flat. So close that down, locked, and that's now in. So now I go like this a couple of times. It's now winding it round. You get a little resistance click there. Right. And it's at one frame, right? So it's it won't let me go on any further now. So it knows that it's ready for the first shot. So I go like that. And that's ready. So if I was to take that off and take a shot, after I'd done the shot, it would let me wind that lever round to here, but no further. And then I would wind it back to there. So I'd go like that. And that would wind on the next shot. I don't want to waste a frame because it's only 12 uh, frames, 12 shots per roll of film. Um, so that's how you load a film. And hopefully that's useful to somebody because I kind of was a bit baffled by that at first. And you have to get it just right when you do it. Um, once you've done it once, it's pretty straightforward. Um, oh, I also got with the camera uh, this. Um, lens hood which again kind of has like three little indents that line up you go like that and that clicks on and the 2.8a has a slightly smaller um, bracket size around the lens uh, than any other Roliflex 2.8 um, model that they did so the lens caps uh, and the lens hoods uh, won't fit you can't get you know the 2.8 a sort of first uh, version that Roliflex did. You have to specifically try and seek those out and get them. Um, you can't just um, buy a regular 2.8 uh, Roliflex one, it won't fit. So I was lucky to get that with it really. Um, and it does make a difference, kind of reducing lens flow and things like that, having that hood. Um, you can also get these uh, like yellow filters that can go on the front and Obviously, everything you, that you would do, filters and lens hoods and everything else, it all goes on the bottom lens because that's the one that takes the photo. This is just for looking. Um, so really, in, in reality, when you're using the camera, if I'm like that, um, I've got these two dials on the front. Um, this one here, uh, if I start to turn it with my finger, with my thumb, sorry, you can see the numbers are changing there. So that's the shutter speed, so it can go from bulb there, go like that, clockwise, and I can go all the way up to 200th of a second. So these first sort of 2.8a uh, models that they made only went up to 200th, and then I think 1950, 51, they changed it, it could go up to 500th of a second. Um, so that's how I kind of know I've got the first kind of batch as well. Um, and like I said before, we got the self timer there as well. Um, and then when you're looking through, uh, say you've got your shutter speed at 200th of a second, uh, you then use the other wheel here, and this one works in the same way, but you see the numbers are changing. So that's 8th of a second, 5.6th of a second, uh, f4, keep going, f2.8, yeah, and it goes all the way up to uh, f22. So there's no light meter, so uh, oops. So what you have to do is either use Sony 16, um, which if you know about kind of shooting film, um, there's other videos on, on sort of how to use Sony 16, but um, or you can get a light meter like this, and it will read the light and it will tell you uh, what uh, shutter speed you need based on the available light and uh, for the aperture and then and again you know sort of I'll probably do another video on it specifically how you do those um, how you use those or you can get an app for your phone I often use that and you just point your phone at what you're going to take a photo of and it'll tell you uh, you know if you want to shoot at f2.8 then it's uh, 
you know, uh, such and such, uh, you know, 500th of a second or whatever. Now this only goes up to 200th, so I have to kind of work around that. So I want to take a shot at 200th of a second, then um, 2.8 might sort of uh, overexpose. So I'll have to do like F4, F5.6 um, and dial it in. But generally, you know, take a light reading with your phone or with, um, with an old uh, light meter uh, like this one. And once you know that, say, f5.6 to 20th of a second is the correct setting to take photos then unless the light changes you can just go around and shoot that you know for a couple of hours um, and you don't have to think about it anymore you just leave those settings as they are and you just concentrate on um, focusing and taking the shot and that's it um, the Rolly Flex 2.8a the first version thank you very much if you're liking these videos then uh, like and share and comment and I'll uh, try and reply to any comments made Thank you.